Hi, this is Michael Treadhart, National Technology Instructor, and I want to talk with you a little bit about the WolfNet back office and some key spots that Keller Williams agents need to go in and set up when they get WolfNet activated. So you're going to go in, you're going to get WolfNet activated in the back office of your Keller Williams e-agency site, and that's going to happen on step 4.1. And there's other training videos that will show you how to do that. I've got some out there as well that will show you that process. But once you get it set up, you're then going to come up here to the very top. You're going to log in with your username, your password, and then you're going to choose your MLS that you're a member of. Once you do that, that's going to bring you into the back office of your website for WolfNet. And what you're going to have is the ability to come up here to the very top of the, of the list on the left-hand side and just kind of scroll your way through this list. But sometimes this can be a little daunting for some people because they look at it and they go, oh my gosh, that's a lot of, lot of options. Key points that you need to hit. On the left-hand side, underneath back office, that's where you can pull a report. And you can see right here, this agent has 45 current users set up for their site. And all they have to do is cull through that depending on how they want to sort or if they just want to come down here and say, show me all 45 users, they hit submit. That's then going to take you out to show you all the 45 users. And then at that point, you can email all those users. You can export all those users. A key point to remember for Keller Williams agents, even though this is WolfNet and you get a lead off your WolfNet uh, website, that lead is going to be going into your eEdge back office. You're going to get a lead notification that it has gone into the eEdge back office. Now, when that happens, you're going to go back over here into your WolfNet back office to manage that lead in terms of what they're looking for, pulling those reports, seeing what type of search saver that they've set up. All of that is being done right here in the back office part of WolfNet. Another key point that you need to look at is user registration fields. What are you making them sign up for? And you can see you have required, optional, and don't show. So you can pick and choose. I would say Minimal is best. Don't make them sign in for too many required items. Don't make them sign in, you know, see too many optional items. Minimal is best because if you try to make them jump through too many hoops, they're just not going to do it. So a lot of your report polling, a lot of what your clients are viewing, that's all going to be controlled underneath the back office. Contact information, that one's pretty straightforward. Do you have the right contact information in there, right phone numbers, right information that you need to have in? Key point that you need to know, you can do a carbon copy and a blind carbon copy in here. So if you have an assistant, <clears throat> somebody who's managing your team, leads coming in, they can go in and they can do all that for you. Come on down a little bit farther. Property search configuration. You have site login options. That is a big one. Make sure that this right here where it says login required to view details is enabled. And then you choose the number anywhere from 0 to 10 that you want to have set up. Kind of the industry standard for WolfNet is three. They have it defaulted at three. What that means is somebody does a property search. They see 50 properties. They click on property number one, the detail page for property number one. And then in this case with Brandon, since he has it set at two, they go to a second property. But before they go and click on the third property page, there's a pop-up that's going to ask them to uh, register. So it's going to require some information for them to sign in to continue. You can control that with site login options. My suggestion is to do login required to view details enabled, choose that number, leave everything else disabled. Come on down a little bit farther. This is something that is fairly new. You can see you have all these different little options here for neighborhood schools and, and, and things like that. But another big piece that is fairly new is SEO settings. You have the ability to go in and give your title and your description and your keyword description for your search from WolfNet. This is meta tags. This is uh, the things that you see that Google sees as well that describe your search. So in Brandon's case, since he works the uh, Plano, Texas, Dallas area, he's going to use a lot of those type of keywords for his title. Think of the title as the cover of the book. The description is the inside cover of the book. Make me want to pick up the book and read it. So it wouldn't necessarily be Brandon's name. It would be the areas that he's going to service. That what's, that's what we're going to put in there. And if you struggle with that, all you have to do is come out to Google and then type in, uh, in Brandon's case, Plano, Texas, real estate. And anything that is in blue is going to show the page title. Anything in black is going to be the meta tag description. So that is a good barometer of, of what you should put in 
for title and description. Save your changes. You scroll on down this page. There's a, there's a lot of other options that you can take, take a look at, but those are your big ones that you really need to focus on. I will be doing a separate video for WolfNet on probably one of the most important things in WolfNet, and that is the URL search builder. So check out that video for the URL search builder, and I hope this quick little video helped you with some of the settings for WolfNet.